What's happening, people? Welcome back to United View. Guys, the game has just kicked off. It's Manchester United versus Brighton. Man United were playing away today in the kit that I don't really like. I call it the highlighter kit. It's the highlighter kit. Uh, we're playing up against a Brighton who have conceded 46 goals in the WSL this season. And they're currently in a relegation battle against Leicester and Tottenham. Um, at the bottom of the table. Manchester United are the team that have scored the most goals in the WSL and this is a big opportunity to capitalise on Chelsea's loss last week to Manchester City whilst Manchester City and Arsenal are also breathing down our necks not only just for top three but for that number one spot. It's currently two minutes into the game here at Broadfield what was it called? Broadfield Stadium. Yeah, Broadfield Stadium is home of Crawley Town FC and I'm hoping that we can capitalise on Brighton's ability to concede a lot of goals and it's Ella Toon on the ball. Ooh. Ooh, there's Tooney, she's calling for it on the right. Oh, she's got out for a phone. Keep, keep, keep tuned in, guys, because I'm hoping to bring you guys all the highlights, all, all, all the talks after the game, hopefully some player interviews. Men's football's back, men's football is back, but the women are also on a big, big charge. They are on a charge, not just for the title, but for Champions League football, and I think that's the goal. Come on, United. Eight minutes into the game. United have created a few few chances, I think. Um, a lot of it coming from the right-hand side. Ella Toon is playing on the right wing. We've only got to it in left. Um, a lot of the chances have been coming. And again, now she's literally closing down the centre-back to steal the ball off her, to nick the ball off her. I think if anything's going to come, it's going to be from that right-hand side. It's funny because the press box here at the stadium is literally sitting in the main fans, so you can hear them. They're really loud. There's about, I would say, about 4,000, 5,000 fans here today because the home stands are, are pretty packed. And as usual, the away stand is always packed with the die-hard Manchester United fans that follow them across the country. But an 11.30 kickoff, guys. 11.30 kickoff. That means people are setting up from Manchester. Oh, yeah. Five and ten. Bright and times are really into the game, bottom of the table. I think they probably feel like they could nip something from this game. But once we get one goal, the floodlights will open and I think we'll just score multiple. And there we have it, Manchester United won Brighton nil in the 12th minute, a corner into the box, into the six yard box, and Leah goal and just got to the end of it. Oh man, guys, the goals are gonna come, they're gonna come thick and fast. We've got a good 78 minutes still to play. Um, Manchester United are putting a lot of balls into the, the, the wingers. So if anything comes, there you go. Now Alicia Russo is onto that ball. If anything's going to come, it's always going to come from the wings. It's going to come from the wings. The United fans uproar, singing, we got Leo Galton. Whoa, super Leo Galton. You can hear them. You can hear them, they're singing now. They got so much energy for the 11 30 kickoff. I ain't even got energy like that, but it was a great goal from the goal and I think uh, Mark Skinner will be impressed with that. This Ella Toon and Ona Batier right wing. I'm really enjoying it. I'm liking what I'm seeing. I'm, I'm definitely going to ask him about that because it's really an impressive pairing. Ona Batier slips and get back up with the best friend. Guys, I'm sitting in front of these Brighton fans. I respect them. I respect them so much for their enthusiasm. I respect it. 11.30 in the morning. It's a rainy Saturday. Come on, Manchester United. That's two back-to-back -back goals that have just gone against Brighton. Yeah. Both throw-ons going to Manchester United, where a lot of the fans are feeling like it should have gone to them. Nyla Letizia got pushed into the mud onto the touchline. I, I shouldn't laugh, but I don't know. I don't know who that ball came off. And obviously, I can't see replays here because they don't have um, screens in the press box. But Manchester United are on the counter-attack. Does it look like Borussia is going to get on the end of the on end of that? Lydia Williams, the goalkeeper, just comes and gives it out. The centre back very right, and they're doing a good job. And there you go. The referee. A lot of people are not impressed with the referee right now because now now she's stopped the game. Now she has stopped the game. And, and, it's, and we're so close to the pitch. At this point, I can hear conversations between the players. I'm actually kind of fascinated by this because I'm not used to this. Um, but they're literally having an argument. Referee is having an argument. What are you doing? Told her to come off what and she picked doing? up a knock. And she went down and the team, the medical team came on. You don't know what you're doing! They're not happy, guys. They're not happy. They told her, the referee had told her to go to to go off to come back on as she went down and the medical staff came onto the pitch. I guess that's why, but they're not happy with that. 
Still 1-0 United, and two minutes into the game. Guys, it's half time here. And yes, I'm hiding this high-vis jacket because they gave me a high-vis, but they let me come pitch side. And I'm going to be standing on the side that Manchester United are shooting in. So hopefully we can get some goals shooting in that direction. Hopefully get some good footage. But it's currently 1-0. You can see the United bench warming up behind me here at half time. We've got Nikita Paris on the bench. We've got Lucia Garcia, who scored three goals in her last three WSL games. And she's only played 40, 46 minutes. She's only played 46 minutes, so it'll be interesting to see if she comes on today at some point during the second half, but we've got a very good bench. Tuankara has been reinstated into the bench, obviously. Um, we've got Middleton Patel on, on the bench, youngster coming up through the Manchester Academy. Um, yeah, we've got Nikita Paris and, and we've got Lucia Garcia, and hopefully, guys, hopefully we can, we can get a few more goals. Come on, United. Guys, it's the second half and I am here pitch side. Manchester United are shooting in, the, in this direction. It's the first five minutes, but a lot of the action has been coming actually in the other direction. Millie Turner with a big header to actually stop us from conceding a goal. Brighton were through with an opportunity and then Mary Ertz with another stop. She's been actually pretty good this game. She's been twisted, tested quite a bit. And you know, this is why she's the this is why she's the best in the world. This is why she's the best goalkeeper in the world and she won that award. This is why she's got the most clean sheets in the WSL. Hopefully, you know, they trigger her 12-month extension and they give her a new contract because she deserves it. She's England's number one. She's our number one. And Brighton fans are not happy with a lot of the calls coming from the referee today. I don't think I've ever seen a ref get booed that much. And I've been to a lot of games. I don't think I've seen a lot of, fan, uh, a lot of fans booing booing the ref today but they are not proud they're not happy with a lot of the calls that she's given away to Manchester United by complaining one thing I'm really annoyed about is this high vis that I have to wear I really feel like it's ruining my fit obviously I would do a fit check guys but I don't think it's appropriate for me to start showing my trainers and whatnot on the channel but I'm pitch side here at the Broadfield Stadium and obviously because the pitch and and you know the side is so close to each other there's a lot of mud and as a result, I've ruined my, my trainers. And then this high-vis jacket is ruining my fit. And it's Williams is actually through. She's just come on for Bo Risa. And Risa has gone to the right-hand side and she's just been dispossessed. So back to the information about this high-vis and my fit. Guys, it's really ruining my mood. I'm trying to find a way to take it off without being told to put it back on. Because obviously it's how they identify people who could be pitch side. Um, hoping United get a goal so I can get you lot that content. Um, but I'm really proud of the women's team. Obviously, it would have been nicer to, 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 to be all over them attacking-wise and to be scoring a lot of goals, considering the fact that they are a team that have conceded the most goals in the league. Um, Toon has just been brought down. No, Onabatia has just been brought down on a nice little free kick about 30 yards out from the box. So I'm hoping that this will be able to get us another goal considering the fact that we scored the first goal from a set piece from a corner. And it looks like Mark Skinner might be making some changes. Nikita Paris is just warming up in front of me. So is Jade Riviera and so is oh, Mary Earps with another save. Three players are warming up right now. Nikita Paris, Jade Riviera and Cascarino. Um, Jade Riviera has not made her debut for Manchester United yet. Obviously, she was at the Old Trafford game named on the bench but she's yet to play. Could this be her WSL debut? Let's wait and see. Obviously, Nikita Paris has been dropped um, and, and Mark Skinner went for um, Ella Toon on that right-hand side in the first half, but winter break, uh, not winter break. What am I talking about, guys? I'm just so chuffed about the goal, but second half, um, international break is coming up. Ella Toon will probably be off um, with England. So, so Nikita Paris could get a chance to come on. I hope Jade Riviera gets the chance. And it's again Alicia Russo with the ball. Oh, blocked. Come on. Come on. I, I gotta say, I gotta stop saying come on United after every clip because I feel like I say it every time. But come on United, 2-0. Let's go. Oh, Ella Toon just scored. But it was offside. It was off the back of a save from a Leah Golton shot. I really thought Leah Golton had her hat trick. That Leah Golton shot came as a result of a Russo chance she skips past the two center backs quick feet twinkle toes got a shot but it got blocked and that landed to leah galton and then leah galton shot was saved by the goalkeeper and it landed to ella toon but it was offside i really thought i really thought leah galton had her hat trick but there's still a lot to play for 
is about 15 minutes left of normal time and we'll probably see a few minutes of extra time. Quite a few players now have gone back to the bench, but Martha Thomas is now warming up in front of me, which I can anticipate that she would come on for Alicia Russo. Tuankara is also warming up, who has not got that much playing time in the WSL and just generally since joining Manchester United in the summer. She came as a backup centre-back option, got dropped from her French national team as a result of the lack of playing time. So maybe, maybe she gets a chance today. Maybe she gets a chance today. Come on, United. As expected, guys, Alicia Russo came off. As always, big crowd reception. She's really appreciated by Manchester United fans. Obviously, I know that they love her. They want her to stay. Obviously, the bid came in in January for her to leave. Um, Arsenal tried to bid a record bid, 500k plus for her, but Manchester United declined. Her contract expires at the end of this season. The end of this season. And the end of this season is not that far away, guys. There's about two months now left of the, until the last game of the season when we play Liverpool away on the 27th of May. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that before the actual season wraps up at uh, the end of June, she might sign a contract extension, but then the World Cup starts, so a lot of people will be off with their national teams to Australia and New Zealand for the World Cup. So I'm really hoping Alicia Russo stays, but today, even though she didn't get a goal, so important in link-up play, dragging defenders away, back to goal, going wide. She's just, she's just, a, great, she's just a great player. She's one of the best players in our team, in a, in a stacked team. And, and she was appreciated when she was coming off. But now there's about 12, 10 minutes to go. Yeah, 11 minutes to go. Manchester United 2-0 up. And I'm hoping Leah Galton can secure that hat-trick. And, and, and hopefully she starts to get the respect that she deserves. It's still about five minutes to go of the second half. But it's so funny being pitch side because you just hear the funniest conversations between the refs and the players that you obviously don't get to hear when you're in the crowd or if you're watching at home. I just heard a Brighton player complaining about United taking long to take a corner but Katie Zellum was trying to make the ball stationary at the corner flag but it kept rolling down oh oh there you go oh no let's is that oh no no it's Williams Rachel Williams and she does a heart to the crowd I was in the middle of talking about the funny conversations and Manchester United just scored from, scored from a header come on United man that's what I was saying you get to hear the funny stuff because the ref was telling Katie Zellum off and uh, she was like ref ref the ball's rolling down yeah, and it's just, I don't know why I find those conversations funny because you never get to hear it when you're in the crowd or anything. And, and, and you hear the, the comments that players make to each other, you know, during corners and, and during free kicks and set pieces, throw ones, etc. But it's 3 0 now, United. I had to cut that clip short because they were celebrating. Um, and, and I think it's a comfortable win. It's a comfortable win today. Obviously, we'll see what the players have to say after the game and the manager. And that's a through ball. Oh, Garcia skips past the keeper and it's four. It's 4 0. It's 4 0. It's four Every time I just want to talk about something random, it seems like we'll score. But Lucia Garcia just makes it four as she skips past the keeper and finishes it. Listen, Lucia Garcia, four goals in the last four WSL games and neither of them have been 90-minute games. She has not had a 90-minute fixture yet. She has not. I think she's played now in total in those four games, including today. She's played about 70-something, 80 minutes. Four goals in four WSL games. I'm not an XG specialist. But I think I think she's got a good XG rating, guys.
It's a wonderful, wonderful performance. I'm really pleased. It ranks up there as one of the best performances based on the circumstances. How tricky, as you said, the pitch is a bit bobbly, but also coming up against the Brighton side, they're fighting for their lives. How tricky is it to kind of break them down? They showed their resilience. They did. They're a tough team. Like I, I, I genuinely believe Amy's doing a great job with them, and um, and I believe she will do a great job with them. Finally, uh, I know you always say it's game by game, week by week, but you've opened up a, a lead and at the top of the table. All of your opponents in the title race are playing tomorrow. That gives you quite a nice position. Yes, it does, but we can only maximise what we can do. So we take it game to game. We, accrue, we can accrue the points we can accrue. If we maximise that, we'll finish where we want to finish anyway. So I can't look. Honestly, I'll look at the results tomorrow and, and some of the performances based on games coming up. But reality is we've done our job right now and we can look forward to giving the girls a couple of days off, then they're going away into national period and then starts the busy period again. So all, all we've done is our job today and that's what we have to do. Thank you. Hi Mark, congratulations on the win. Um, Lucia Garcia, that's four goals in four games in about less than 90 minutes. What value does she bring coming off? How important she, is she to, to your to your plan this season? Yeah, she, she's, she's more importantly huge for the rest of our project here. Like. She was unlucky not to start today, but the game was different. We knew we were going to get that. So you're not going to have your technical ability to play the way that we know Luthia can. So we had to mix it a little bit. Um, in all reality, she's got wonderful talent. She's learning lots this year. Four goals shows her focus. So, yeah, there's going to be lots more to come for Luthia, no doubt. Uh, Tuankara was warming up and so was Riviera. Do you, do, you, do you think we're going to get a chance to see them frequent more a bit this season, especially, you know, the back end of the season, Liverpool, Man City, Arsenal coming up and a big fixture again against Brighton at home this time in the FA Cup? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, in terms of we've got very talented players already starting in positions and very talented players to come into positions. So um, they're going to continue to keep working hard as they are now. Um, but the reality is... If a moment comes, I want them to be ready to take it. And our job is to support that when it happens. But um, we like consistency, especially when you don't need to change for the sake of it. But the reality is the girls are working really, really hard. And so should it come, should their moment come, I'm sure they'll take it. Uh, unrelated to this game today, but is there any opportunities for contract extensions with players that have 12 months left? In terms of? Uh, 12 months left on their contract. You know, Mary Earps has 12 months left um, uh, contract extension. Will we have a trigger in sight? We are continuing to work, so hopefully we'll have something before the end of the season, because obviously that's when they're out of contract, but look, we're just working hard. The players are enjoying their football, so that's a big sign for them to want to continue with us. But yeah, we're working hard behind the scenes. Thank you very much, Mike. Thanks. We went for it, and as a result on that, it opened up some space in behind at times, and with the pace of Leah Goldton, etc. As you say, you did, you did play, you had good spells of possession throughout, and you did take the game into them at times, especially on the counter attack. How pleased are you with the resilience your side is showing in this kind of battle for the survival? Yeah, 100%. I think uh, we want to compete in every game, and we gave it a real good go today. I think it's a real positive that we're competing with them. I still believe we're moving in the right direction, so we just stick together and keep up. Oh, um, um, big FA Cup semi-final now in a, in a couple of weeks against Manchester United. So now a couple of weeks to regather yourselves and hopefully put in a, a really good performance in that game. Yeah, it's a good opportunity to take the positives from this today um, and then think about how we go about it. We will offer something for sure in that FA Cup sem semi-final. We're not just going to that game to take part. We're going to try and get through to the final. And for us, pressure's off. We can enjoy the occasion and make the most of it. Thank you very much. Amy, um, I think the fans here today weren't, weren't particularly happy with the refereeing decisions, especially in the first half. Um, do you think you kind of got a bit unlucky with the swing of things? I think, um, I think the officials are trying their best. I think there needs to be more support around it to support their performances in terms of they need to be full time. So I, I, I see officials every week, they, they're trying their best and we have regular meetings with the PGMOL um, and share our feedback. But now I think there needs to be more investment that goes into officiating to ensure that we can, you know, support the game where it's at at the moment. And do you think if they did do that, that would only make the women's game just it'd take it to another level? 100%, 100%, 100%. It's Manchester United four, Brighton Hove women nil. Guys, firstly, 
Firstly, I've taken off the high vis. <laughs> I've taken off the high vis because it's really ruined my fit. I did speak to a few players after the game, but um, we can't use that footage. Um, but we did speak to Mark Skinner after the game. Obviously, he was really impressed with Lucia Garcia, who I had a, a lot of positive things to say about her. Four goals in four games in less than 90 minutes combined, which is actually very, very big. Not just that, I asked him about opportunity for rotations, for player rotations, for the likes of Tuankara, Rivieri, um, to get opportunities. And he said, listen, we've got great talented players in the team, but we've also got great talented players on the bench and their job is to step up when they're called upon. We've got Brighton coming up in the FA Cup in two weeks time, but right now we head off to the international break. We are Smart Skinner about keeping that momentum. If the, the fact that we're going into international break is now going to mess with the momentum. And he said, listen, it's our job to keep the momentum going. So I'm really hoping that Manchester United can continue to do that. Um, Right now I'm doing DIY because I've actually just put my camera up on the stands and it seems to be staying there. Hopefully I don't drop and crack or anything. But right now I'm pitch side. Everyone's just, stadium's really empty. There's no more fans. Uh, Sky are wrapping up. They're shooting. There's a few players just here talking to each other pitch side and the coaching staff of Manchester United and Brighton. And the women have headed off into the changing rooms. Um, one thing I really, really enjoyed today, not just the football in the second half and, and the goals, but... The fact that the players stayed back after the game for about 30 minutes, guys, for about 30 minutes, players were going around, signing shirts, taking pictures, giving things away, to, giving things to, to fans. Mary Earps gave her gloves to, to a young kid in the crowd that had a, a sign saying, can I have your gloves, Mary? Um, and they are really inspiring the next nation, I'm not just Manchester United footballers, but just women footballers in the WSL, the next, the next 10, 15 uh, uh, year olds that are coming up through academies right now are being inspired by women's football right now and today is just a testament to it I know a lot of people some fans don't like the fact that fans players stick around afterwards to sign shirts and you know they want they want they want the value to be added to women's football where you know they're not as easily easily accessible as um, they usually are but I really think that this is one thing that makes women's football so enjoyable is the fact that the women's team always stay behind to take pictures and even the Brighton players stayed behind taking pictures with fans a lot of Brighton players a lot of Brighton fans were getting their shirt signed by Manchester United players what can I say it's the Manchester United pull it's the Manchester United pull but you can hear them they're clapping people are just clapping sitting pitch side just chit chatting um, on a cold I'm not going to say it's a cold miserable day here at Broadfield Stadium but for an 11th 30 kickoff momentum is still going throughout the day i'm going to talk about a few things from the game just before i wrap up this video but for me alicia russo is so important and i asked mark skinner about not just russo but just generally players that have either a 12-month trigger option in their contract and their contract's going to end or players that have not had their contract extended yet and mark skinner said that listen you guys can see what he said, but I'm going to summarise it. <laughs> Mark Skinner said, listen, people are enjoying playing for Manchester United right now. They're enjoying the football and they are enjoying themselves. And that's the most important part. And the contract things are important to get that solved. But he's rest assured that he they are they are trying to sort it out. It's so important for a lot of players to stay. Um, Katie Zellum today had two assists. Obviously, Leah Galton had two goals. But for me, my highlight out of all the goals and the assists was when Hannah Blundell played Leah Galton through and she just skipped past the keeper and slotted it home and they ran off and celebrated together. Half the, half the team were celebrating with Hannah Blundell and the other half were celebrating with Leah Galton. And then Leah Galton and Hannah came together to celebrate together. And you can just see that, you just see that companionship between the players you know these are players that enjoy playing together they've got the vibe together on the pitch and off the pitch and I think that makes a big big difference now Manchester United are going to have a nice international break some players will be off with England and some won't some will be off with their national teams and some won't but the most important thing is to keep the momentum going in two weeks time Manchester United will welcome Brighton this time at home for the FA Cup semi-final someone just cleaning their boots Behind. it's okay <laughs> just play a cleaning her boots behind me just beating the hell out of them uh, excuse my language but as i said in two weeks time manchester united will invite brighton home for an fa cup semi-final and listen if it's anything like today's fixture 
Manchester United are going to Wembley. Manchester United women are going to Wembley for the FA Cup final. But like Mark Skinner said in his pre press conference after the game, it's one game at a time. It's only one game at a time. And it's, it's, a, it's a similar theme of what I've been saying in, in men's football about one game at a time. Take each game as it comes. We can't think about the final just yet because the semi-final is yet to be played. But Brighton will be welcoming, uh, will be welcomed to, to Manchester, uh, Manchester's home ground, the Lee Sports Village. Or valley, is it village or valley? I don't know, guys. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Anyways, sorry, guys. Josh, if you don't, you don't have to cut that out, bro. It's okay. You don't have to cut it out. But anyways, as I was saying, it's one game at a time. Where, where Brighton will be coming to Manchester for the FA Cup semi-final, and hopefully we'll see more goals and we'll see the road to Wembley continue. I'm really excited. Obviously, we've got a month between the next WSL fixture um, and today's fixture today. There's four weeks between that. Uh, Manchester United will be playing Spurs. Oh, no, we will be playing Villa away and then we'll be playing Spurs and then we'll be playing Arsenal. But that's been postponed because of Arsenal's semi-final uh, Champions League game that will be played on that day instead. So we'll still be playing Arsenal towards the end of the season and we'll also be playing Manchester City and then Liverpool. Those last four games of the WSL title run dare I say it, title run is big. We got a Manchester derby, we've got another big four derby, and then we've got Liverpool, our rivals, both at women's level and men's level, to be honest. Um, and obviously in between that, we could have a FA Cup final to play. So make sure you guys, damn, people beating the hell out of their boots, man. It's very muddy here. As you can see, I'm pitch side. Shout out to Flex and the United View team for giving me this access to bring you guys this kind of coverage. If you guys are really enjoying it, please, 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 guys, please. I've gone for a journey today. You guys don't even want to know what happened to me. I, I took a motorway trip. I'm, 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 I'm hot. I'm very tired. I'm, I've haven't drank anything or eaten anything all day, even though it was an 11:30 kickoff. Um, I forgot some of my equipment in the car just before the game started, so I had to go back to my car, even though I parked far away from the stadium. I had to go run back there, run back. Just got back in time for kickoff, and then obviously I came pitch side. My white and black trainers they got muddy. I got told to put on a, a, a yellow bib that ruined my out fit it was just it's, guys for all of that that i've been through today if you guys do not like this and subscribe and comment and keep rocking with the channel then i will be very disappointed in the minions the minions i'll be disappointed with you guys and the united view community but honestly if you guys are enjoying this content that we're bringing from manchester united women's team make sure you lot like make sure you lot comment make sure you guys subscribe make sure you guys let me know below who's your favorite women's player this season because i could tell you mine but i'm not going to ruin it for you guys so make sure you guys comment below and make sure you guys keep keep pushing the channel really appreciate the community it's been a fun day here at the stadium as manchester united beat Brighton. I was about to say West Ham, guys. Manchester United have beaten Brighton 4 nil. I'm literally like one of the last few people and I think one of the stewards is waiting for me to leave. So I'm going to wrap it up here. But like I said, make sure you look like, make sure you look comment, make sure you guys subscribe. Manchester United is still top of the league on the road to the WSL title. Let's go.